All right, welcome back. Another Bri the Builder episode here of building the Acastus Knight Asterius. Um, I don't know how well we'll be able to see, but I did actually use... Let's see if it'll focus here. No, it doesn't really, really want to. Um, I used the thumbtack and poked into the center of each of those lenses. Um, just got a simple thumbtack here. Just kind of found the center and poked it in and worked it around a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to go in with a couple of these drills, nice little tiny hand drills. And I'll just start making these bigger and bigger and I've got to angle it a little bit back in toward kind of the center of the head um, so that as I run fiber optics that's how I'm going to do the LEDs uh, at least in the head piece here um, the easiest I believe way to do this is going to be to run a bundle of LEDs through the back of the eye. And then in the front, I'll use two-part epoxy to essentially create a lens. Uh, and then on the inside, I will be able to light some of the fibers with red and some with orange and i also ordered some leds um that flash well i don't think that'll be too good if i had some breathing leds that might be kind of cool uh but i've got a let's see in the step up two i think that one should be good and i don't want to go too far too fast with any of these drill bits So the real, like, I'm not too worried about using the drill bit to get all the way to the edge. I need the drill bit to get all the way through. I might actually need my drill. Now that I've got a nice path through, that should be fine. The drill should get through that. Right, well, let's go ahead and do the smaller one here. We don't want to jump to that right away.
for now. Let's see if that's all the way in. I wouldn't have too much farther. We'll get that one after. All right, now just a little bit more cleanup around some of these spots. One of the other kind of big things I want to do right now, though, is uh, cut the ball joint off of the legs and start working on the magnets because I received from k j Magnetics my nice two large flat disc magnets um, that are really strong. So one of them replacing the ball here, one of them set inside the socket there, uh, and we're gonna have a very strong setup that will still then be able to be completely rotated. Um, so let's grab my little saw here and we're gonna see how much vibration we get in our camera now. But I've gotta do as, as, as little as possible at first here as I work around the model. I wanna just get a nice line started right down next to the base.
If I cut myself bad, I, I'll leave it in for sure. Wouldn't edit that out. Oh, look at that. Oh, and wow. Okay, that ended up working out really nice. That's a beautiful, beautiful cut. That worked. Now, the magnet will actually sit on there really nicely. It actually is almost a perfect fit. Um, I have a nice little kind of reveal around it. And if I really wanted to, I could do some epoxy sculpt or yeah, the epoxy sculpt um, and build up a ring around it to kind of capture and hold and make sure it's got an, a physical rim all the way around it. Ooh, wow, that was really jumped. Um, beyond that, I believe I now should just have to hollow this ball out around the rim here a little. That one is going to be a bit more of a challenge here. So I'm going to try and just shave out a little at a time. And then the interior of the space, I may be able to just use the ball. Uh, it's going to be a little too big, and I'm definitely not cutting it down. Um, a little too big, so I will just kind of fill the base in there with two-part epoxy, some epoxy sculpt. Um, so it has a at least some base underneath to attach to. It doesn't have to be solid, uh, but I do want something under there. Obviously going to take a bit more cleanup to get that really nice and even, but really process wise, that's it. I'm just going to kind of keep working at that and fitting it until it sits in there really, really nicely, but it's getting close. It's definitely close. It's almost where I want it. I need it in maybe another two millimeters and there's spots where it's there and there's spots where it's rocking. So I just got to keep looking for and finding out where those little spots are so I can clean them out of there. So I have finished uh, cleaning that out. So the magnet sits in there really nicely now. And I mean, there's both are together with a space in between, but that bottom magnet underneath there basically has, as far as I can tell, um, the same reveal all the way around the edge. And it's just barely above the trim of the night itself. So that should be great. Um, and I took a minute to kind of clean up and get rid of all of that dust and debris uh, so that I can actually have a decent clean workspace. Um, I also went and removed the head from the sprue so that I could drill from the back as well and make sure that I connect it all the way through. Um, the challenge then after that is going to be once, once this is all set together, this piece goes under here, right? And then the head will sit on here. So I'm going to have to take my drill bits and go through the eye openings at this point to mark on the carapace 
uh, where I'm going to have to drill. But that's going to be next, right? That's going to be a little bit later. For now, I just want to kind of finish up dealing with getting my magnets attached. Now that I have the space there. Let's see. So we're going to start with this one uh, because this is going to take some epoxy sculpt to fill in the gap underneath. I want a full surface um, for the magnet to be glued to attached to. Uh, because those are really strong magnets and once they're magnetized to each other, uh, I definitely do not want them to pull off. So should be more than enough. All right. And I'll be, well, potentially let's grab that back. I'll mix up a little bit extra. Um, the super glue that I used to attach on the base there, I think I'm gonna end up building a very thin rim of epoxy sculpt around that to help lock that magnet in as well. So just get a little ball of that so I know size wise. That looks really close to the same size. So we'll start mashing them together. Let's ball it up, make a snake. Keep doing that. It's close, maybe one more. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Should be pretty evenly mixed. All right, now let's make a tube. That should be enough to go around here to make a nice rim for that magnet. Then this, we're just gonna stuff down in. And I'm at least minimally hopeful. Uh, I think I need to work with these magnets individually. So what I would like to do is take my Sharpie and put a mark on both kind of outsides, right? That way, once I get to the point of putting the magnets in, I can separate these two. And I always basically know as long as I hide my Sharpie mark, right? They'll, they'll magnetize, right? They'll be polarized correctly. So Sharpie mark goes away there. Sharpie mark goes away there. Everything's happy. So I can separate these guys. Um, and that ring in the middle really helps. So with either of them, just take the Sharpie mark then, and I can just force it in. Now I wanna make sure I actually get that set in there as much as possible. That can't go in anymore, but I'm actually going to have to steal a little of this so that snake can actually be a little thinner, no problem. And then I'm going to have a thin snake of that. So a little muddy water here.
All right, and then we're left with what is, I mean, not absolutely, but essentially a perfect transition there. Now, I can't really guarantee at this point that if I were to get this next to the other magnet, this one would probably pull out of here. So we're going to avoid that. And keep this off on its own. And then over here, we know we have enough. I'm gonna have to make a new snake out of that. And then I have my other magnet. I found a screw underneath my table there. And then we're going to use a bit of super glue. All right, the tip is clear. And we're gonna we're gonna goop this up a little bit. Make sure we have a real good connection. And I am just gonna let that kind of set up with the magnet on there. And as I recall, right, as long as our Sharpie dots go away, our polarization will be happy. So now I just find center here. As close as I can. That should end up giving me kind of a nice natural ring there um, to use my um, two-part epoxy on the epoxy sculpt. So I'm going to hit that quick with the zip kicker. Oh, actually, while I'm here, before I forget, I need to just re-super glue real quick. I think hopefully that won't move. I guess we'll find out this. Go. Togo. All right, that's good. Top magnet didn't move. Now let's clean off the super glue. You gotta be careful. Yeah, I've had the super glue kind of wick through the paper towel really quickly and super glue my fingers to the paper towel. So try to try to watch for that now. Alright, now a little zip kicker on those two real quick. So then, that should make it. I, I want to make sure I get it off of here because I, I don't think it it interacts with the two part epoxy with the epoxy sculpt, um, but I don't know for sure. So I do want to make sure it's out of kind of out of the way before I put my rim around that piece. All right, so. Roll out a tube, a little snake, and then once that's in position, I should be able to sculpt it. It's flattened it out pretty nicely. Um, I do need my flat shaper though. That's probably a good size.
bottom edge is already almost seamless. Um, just trying to think about what I'm gonna do. Kind of the top edge. Um, and I'm going to at least attempt at the top edge there to just try to do like a, a chamfer and just kind of have an even angle uh, from the magnet out. And I think I can kind of wrap the curved edge of the magnet that way. to help hold it as well as make it look more like a, uh, an intentional, more mechanical kind of machined edge. I don't know how perfect my chamfer will be with just the sculpting tools, but once this is dry, I can always go back and file it. Kind of a bit extra here. This may end up making it so I have a very smooth uh, chamfer edge rather than a more kind of squared off filleted edge, but I think that would be just fine. And I, I guess as I'm cleaning it here. It looks like I'll be able to keep that edge nice and square. I just want to get as much of the junk off the surface as I can here.
All right. Well, it's not perfect, but that's pretty good. All right, so I have eyes are drilled. All right, so both of them are all the way through. And then next, after all this is dry, I have to figure out where that goes through the whole carapace. But I should have plenty of room on the inside of the body to deal with some LEDs, uh, battery switch. Actually, I won't need a battery. I'm going to run a USB cable, but I'll have a switch, a little push button switch that should be able to be mounted. Um, well, somewhere. I'm not sure where. We are going to find a cool spot to mount it, though. Um, somewhere that makes sense. I definitely don't want to replace any of the cool details try to hide that switch um, as much as possible. So um, we'll figure out where that's going to go, but the LEDs and the switch and all that stuff's kind of on its way. So I have the fiber optics. I just need the LEDs. So we're in a good spot. Everything is coming together really nicely. Um, those magnets are going to be fantastic. This body's going to stay together really nicely. 